in Denver, Colorado. It wasn't just a big night of fights. It was a big night of memorable moments. Conor McGregor with us here in Denver, Colorado. Both left hand from Mark Bull. Right hand, right back from Mike Perry. And McGregor Could I get a face-off with Conor McGregor, man? It's an incredible setup here. Incredible matchmaking, incredible storytelling. Oh, you had to come here. All these fighters that step in here are warriors, and all have my respect. And I'm into this game, yeah. We'll be into this, yeah. And we are live here in the Maverick Center here in Salt Lake City, Utah. Well, what a night it is going to be historic indeed for BKFC 56. Whoever's the king of violence right here, this is going to be a great fight. fighting in the city of angels. We've got the biggest announcement in the BKFC history we're about to make, so let's make that announcement. What's up, Knuckle Mania? The notorious Conor McGregor here. Ladies and gentlemen, the huge announcement that I have for you today. Conor McGregor, myself, and McGregor Sports and Entertainment is now an owner of Bare Knuckle Fighting Championship. Welcome to the big leagues. David Feldman, baby, he did it. He's now an owner of BKFC with us, and we're going to take this motherfucking thing all the way to the top now. Level 2 has begun. This is Sports Rage, Sirius XM, Channel 159, Sports Grid Radio and Television Networks. I am Gable Baretzi. Sean Higgs going to step up into Level 2. Rick Saratella in Level 3. A lot of football talk. We'll talk some baseball and football with Higgs. Football with Saratella. We were just taking a look at uh, the NFL MVP odds for the upcoming season. And listen, I don't think it's crazy to bet on Patrick Mahomes to be the most valuable player. He's the most popular player with the media. He's going to put big numbers up, and he's going to be on one of the best teams in a National Football League. But at the same point in time, there's always a little bit of fatigue. The media like to shake it up and give it to different players. But Mahomes at 5-1, to one, the value's just not there, right? Plus 500, it's not a slam dunk. So it's just you know, the, the, the number just isn't quite good enough at plus 500. Josh Allen is the second choice, and Josh Allen's getting a lot of love for this. If you read around and read previews for the MVP uh, race, they lose to Fawn Diggs. They're going to have a very you know diverse offense in which they spread it around. But with all that being stated, anybody that paid attention, when you saw when Joe Brady took over as the offensive coordinator, uh, for the Buffalo Bills, they did start running the football a lot more. And there seems to be a concerted effort. Like, they don't want to get Josh Allen beat up too much. And, you know, we've seen kind of a pattern with Josh. By the time the end of the year arrives, he's not the same. He's worn out because he's done so much. So he's almost like Eric Lindros. Like, I know we're going back a ways now a little bit, but it sort of just popped in my head now. Like, man, Eric Lindros... Right, like he was a, such a big dude and the way that he played. And they used to tell him, you know, you don't always have to be crazy, bro, right? You don't always have to like, hit, you know what I mean? Go the extra mile to hit somebody or get hit. And he couldn't help himself. And what happened? He ended up with concussion problems. Now, Josh has avoided major injury, but from a fatigue standpoint, Josh isn't oftentimes the same player late in the season as he was because I think he does too much and he gets worn out. And we see, you know, so Brady, you know, Brady's going to want to run a ball with Cook. I think one player that will have a big year this year, and I believe his touchdown prop is uh, over under five and a half, is uh, Dalton Kincaid. Uh, Dalton Kincaid. If you look at the, you know, the Bills offense, Samuel's already hurt right now. 
Keon Coleman's a rookie, and I think Keon Coleman's going to be fine. Uh, you got the Shakir dude, right? You know what I mean? How many times are they really going to throw him the football? So the Bills offense, while I believe it will be effective, I think it will go through Cook, right? I think Cook is going to get a ton of touches. They're going to run the ball a lot. And I'm not saying that Josh Allen won't throw the football, but I think in the Buffalo Bills' perfect world, they wouldn't want Josh to win the MVP. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, they, they don't want Josh, like, running, running around and doing everything and stuff. But me personally, I do. I'm like, you know what? I would rather a player. I said this a million times, like, you know, with Lamar Jackson or a Michael Vick or a Josh Allen. Like, they nearly pulled it off with Colin Kaepernick. Like, you'll often hear with these very mobile quarterbacks, well, you know what? We don't want to get him hurt. It's about longevity. And, you know, we don't want him to run the ball so much. We really want to focus on him throwing the ball. And they'll start, like, messing with the guy and all work on your footwork. And, and, and I've always thought, you know what? Why not just run them into the ground, man? Like, seriously. Like, sir, like, if Josh Allen won the Bills the Super Bowl but got, like, you know, got really effed up in the Super Bowl, wasn't the same after – it would be worth it. And I don't wish injury on him, but he'd be super rich and he'd have the Super Bowl. Like, I'd rather a player, like, you know what I mean? Like, Harbaugh got it, actually, with with Colin Kaepernick. He was like, I have this dude that's faster than everybody else. Uh, For those of you that don't remember, like, Kaepernick, when he played, he was fast, fast, okay? And players would get, you know, like, other players were, like, scared type thing. They were like, man, I couldn't even come close to tackling him. Like when he got he got going, like Kaepernick was taken off, and and you need to remember too, not everybody ran that that little QB zone read option, the RPO, the run pass option. Teams didn't do that, right? Harbaugh like brought that to the NFL with Kaepernick, where it was just this simple little Tebow play type of deal. Roll Kaepernick out, and if you come at him, he'll throw it over your head. If you don't, he'll take off and run. And it worked to perfection, right? And what happened? Teams caught on and realized the only way we're going to stop this is if we murder Kaepernick, like every time. And if we get a penalty, we get a penalty. And they did. And you saw, like, Kaepernick wasn't the same after. Once he got lit up, it was sort of like Cam Newton. Cam Newton used to get lit up all the time. But but Harbaugh didn't care. Harbaugh was like, whatever, dude. He's going to be the quarterback for a couple of years, and we might win a Super Bowl. So I would be the same way. Like, if I was the Buffalo Bills, I'd be like, Josh, run through, tw- you know, run through everybody, bro. <laughs> like, like, you know, the classic example, guys, is John Elway. John Elway, the helicopter through the air, it lands on his head, right? He wins his second Super Bowl in a row. And let's remember, too, that's why I like the Joe Burrow story isn't over, the Josh Allen story isn't over. There's a lot of quarterbacks just because, you didn't, you know, not everyone's Mahomes where they win right away, Right? Or Brady, they're kind of the exceptions. So, you know, Elway lost, like, so many big games and Super Bowls, and it was like, he's never going to win. Like, you know, they were like, look at the, you know, on the Simpsons, right? Like, the laughable losers all the time. Like, the Broncos used to be, the you know, like the Bills losing Super Bowls, where they're the butt of a lot of jokes. Like, the Broncos were kind of like a laughing stock, right? You know, like, in the Simpsons, there's, you know, Homer. Uh, scores a touchdown for the Denver Broncos. He's like, I'm a Denver Bronco in the Super Bowl. And they're like, and now they, to make the score 56 right? 7. Like, like the Broncos used to be like the losers. Like, oh, they got smoked again in the big game. And boom, John Elway wins two Super Bowls in a row and drops the mic and, and leaves. But he went all in, right? He was like doing helicopters, backflips. He was getting lit up. And it was like, I don't care how hard you hit me. I'm winning this football game, and I'm going to do whatever it takes. I'm not going to get rid of the ball. Like, you see guys, I'm going to get rid of the ball. I want to get, you know. It's like, no, no, no. I'm going to run through you if I have to. And he won, right? And he rode off into the sunset after. So I'd rather see a quarterback sort of just lay it out on a line, have a shorter career, and get the glory after. Josh Allen's already super rich. So I don't want to see the Bills get too concerned about Allen, but what I'd like to see them do is – hold off on it, like start to build it up as the season goes on, right? Run your offense, do your thing, but 
if Josh isn't running around and getting hit so much during the regular season, once the month of December starts to arrive, you sort of tell them, wink, wink, hey, start start laying some people out here. Like, you know what I mean? Start, start like, running the ball a little bit more, right? You know what I mean? They just sort of build it up. But I'm not really in love with Josh Allen at plus 800, even though I think the Bills are going to have a good year. As I stated, I think the Bills want to run the football more. And quite frankly, who are they going to throw the ball to? Dalton Kincaid's like the only way. You got Keon Coleman's a rookie. We'll see what he gives. I like Keon, but, you know, Samuel's hurt already. Uh, if the Bills have, you know, the Bills wide receiver depth is thin. They're going to want to run the ball. Joe Burrow at 9-1, to one, very popular guy with the media. When you're betting MVP stuff, that's like what counts because they're the ones voting for it. Like if they hate somebody, you know, it's not a good bet. Right, so Joe Burrow, the media love him. He's going to throw the ball a hell of a lot. He's definitely in the mix. I look at him and and Allen. I would almost like Burrow more than Allen at nine to one because I think the Bengals will throw the football more uh, than the uh, the Buffalo Bills will. C.J. Stroud, very very trendy, but uh, the Texans are like a restaurant that opened up and's been up a, open a month, and people want to give him a five star Michelin rating. It's like, hey, let's slow down. Let's see if they, they they have anything else on the menu. I know they got a dish, but, right? I mean, everyone's Texans, Texans, Texans. I, you know, let's slow down a little bit on that. And McGregor Sports and Entertainment is now an owner of Bare Knuckle Fighting Championship. Welcome to the big leagues. David Feldman, baby, he did it. He's now an owner of BKFC with us, and we're going to take this motherfucking thing all the way to the top now. This is Sports Ranch. Right? I'm Red, so we'll bring Higgs in in a second. We were just talking about the uh, the MVP odds and uh, Josh Allen into Joe Burrow. Joe Burrow, definitely, I wouldn't say, oh, you're insane or it's a bad bet at plus 900. Burrow will definitely be in the mix. Um, there, You know, one thing, there's a lot of good teams in the AFC. He's in a tough division. So there's, you know, but I, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't dismiss him. C.J. Stroud, as I talked about, I like C.J. Stroud, but I think it's a little ambitious to have him up here with the Mahomes and the Allens uh, of the world in his second year. 
uh, right now. Lamar just won. They're not going to give it to him again. They just, like, sort of mix it up. And how the conversation started was how we thought that uh, Jordan Love at plus 1,400 was not a bad look. Um, as I think that the Green Bay Packer offense will be very potent. Jalen Hurts, not a lot of hype about Jalen coming into the year. And Saquon Barkley is going to get a lot of touches for this offense now. Uh, Justin Herbert. Harbaugh is going to want to run the football like 50 times a game. Uh, Brock Purdy. Ah, no. Let's bring in uh, Sean Higgs uh, right now. He's going through his notes. What's up, Sean? I got my, I got, you're talking about future, so I got my future from the Superbook. I'm like, let me see if I got the MVP future here. But I, you know. I, uh, what do you, you think know, about the MVP bet and odds? I'm not a – listen, Burrow to me, he's been hurt a few times. So I don't – you know, is he 100% back from his little wrist or thumb? I don't know what he has. Uh, granted, Lamar, he's a recent winner. Uh, you know, Allen is always out there. Is there is there a lot of love on Goff? What are the Goff odds? Are, are people uh, you know what? Not, I said Jordan Love, and that of, was that was going to be my said, next guy. Is Goff? I you don't know think why? Any love they're, for the they're Lions? Gonna, they're going to be good, and they throw the ball a lot. Like their offense yeah. is built to throw the football. They're not really a run heavy team. They have a bunch of weapons. They like to throw the football, a lot of quick hit type stuff. And I think Goff. That's the whole thing. It's almost correlated, isn't it, though, Sean? If you think the Lions are going to go to the Super Bowl, then Goff can win the MVP, point blank, because he'll be yes. the quarterback of the team that goes to the Super Bowl. And I think the media do- does like him, and it's a good sort of comeback story for Jared Goff. So I agree with you with Goff at 18-1. to Exactly. The comeback story, the guy he gets traded after losing a Super Bowl 13-3, he's terrible, and yet here come the resurgent Lions, and they got – Rambo and the running backs and Laporta. So, yeah, why why wouldn't you take a shot on him? They have – his thing is what? He can't play outside. He's terrible. They have, what, 11 indoor games this year, something like that, they said? I mean, it, it's conducive to him to come out of the NFC. I mean, who do you have, the Niners? Ha, that, and I've heard other people talk about the Niners' schedule this year. It is a tough schedule. They got short weeks, tough – I mean, how, not that – you have stuff in your tank. I get it, but – You've you've gotten a Super Bowl, you lost, and, and your head coach. Forget about blowing Super Bowl leads to the the Chiefs twice. You you were the coordinator in Atlanta blowing Super Bowls. You, you blew leads against the, the the Rams in the NFC Championship game. Like maybe you just can't win a a, a close game like that. Maybe it is the Lions' time. Uh, the Eagles. We'll see. I mean, I think that Sirianni's on the hot seat. You're bringing new coordinators, so if it fails this time, I think you're out the door. Although I like them in week one. I think they got a little chip on their shoulder. They got to, They had to come out strong, right? You mentioned uh, before I came on, you're talking about the flavor of the month down in Houston. Well, I think the, the Packers are the AFC version of, of the Texans. Love had a big year last year and a lot of hype on them. All right, uh, he's going to be solid. But to me, I think Detroit is a, as much as you can be an under-radar team that's probably going to win 13 games, that's where I'd want to put my money on that guy. See, I was going to ask you, actually, looking at the NFC North division odds, the Detroit Lions plus 130 to win a division, Green Bay Packers plus 200, Chicago Bears plus 330, and then the Minnesota Vikings plus 950. But we can get to the Bears in a minute what your thoughts are, but how much better are the Detroit Lions than the Green Bay Packers? I don't think the gap is that big. And I like the Lions, but I am actually high. And I'm not dismissing the Texans, but I think people – are sort of forgetting that the Jags, like the Jags had one bad year and people are acting like they're going to be terrible or something. So I think the Jags are definitely in the mix in that division still. Um, But just as far as the NFC North is concerned, like, do you believe, oh yeah, Detroit's the lock to win? Yeah, no lock. Every lock has a key. But (laughs) because I think it's a toss up to me, I think Green Bay and Detroit will be battling for that division. And I think the bears are going to be right behind them. I, I think the I think it's the Lions to lose. I think they got close enough last year where they're chomping at the bit to get over that hump. Where Green Bay kind of broke through, right? They had not that he was a rookie, but it's his first time taking over since um, Rodgers left. So that was kind of like a new step for him, being a starter and all that. So I still think they have a a little hill to climb. Where I think the the Lions are at that spot now, where it's going to be like, all right, we're here. We're going to the Super Bowl. It's Super Bowl or bust for them. Where Green Bay? Oh, the still Lions are built to win growth. now. Like they're yeah. they're built well, for Bay's, now. This team. Yeah, Green Bay's happy. Hey, we're going to be good this year. I, I still think the Lions 
they've just got that little bit of an edge to them this year. I don't know why. And I, I'm, I'm not a huge, I'm not some Lions fan, but that's my guts tell me it's if the Lions are going to go to Super Bowl this year. I would give the edge to the Lions in the division, but at the same point in time, I like this Green Bay Packer team. As far as the Niners are concerned, I can't disagree with you. It's funny because a lot of other coaches, like, look at the Bills or, you know, other teams that have, you know, get to the playoffs and lose, you know, the Eagles or whatnot. You call it Syria's on a hot seat. You know, Bills fans get mad at McDermott and Josh Allen and stuff. But look at Shanahan. Like, how many times can they get there before it's hard to believe in them again, right? Yeah. Like, I've been burnt a, a couple of times already. And is Purdy all that? Right, I think, you know, the thing with Purdy is I think Purdy's good if he's surrounded by great players, right? And you see in the preseason right now, when Purdy doesn't have real players around him, he looks like a Mr. Irrelevant last pick in the draft type of player. It's amazing what a fine line there seems to be there. And the Niners' schedule is extremely tricky as well. I personally think the Rams are a competitive team. We've got a break coming up, but we'll see what Sean thinks about the Rams in that division. Sean McVay is such a great coach. The problem with the Rams is they've had a rough camp already with severe injuries. Injuries. Like, they keep, they, you know what I mean? They've lost. Like, you know, they lost their starting cornerback. Yeah, they, you know, the, the Nakua goes down. You know, Cooper Cup is always beat up. Stafford's older. So there's not a lot of margin for error with the Rams. That's the one thing I can admit. And McGregor Sports and Entertainment is now an owner of Bare Knuckle Fighting Championship. Welcome to the big leagues. David Feldman, baby, we did it. He's now an owner of BKFC with us, and we're going to take this motherfucking thing all the way to the top now. So 3 nothing for the Seattle Mariners. By Bueller's standards this year, it's kind of settled down. He gave up the two spot in the first, gave up another one. It's not his fault the Dodgers are being shut out right now. So it's 3 nothing. Uh, we're in the top of the fourth inning. But it's pretty alarming, Sean. He's just not the same pitcher. It's the second, third time he's come back. He came back. He struggled. He got hit by a line drive. They took him out. He's come back. He's out. He keeps coming back. And he keeps getting hit in his, like, rehab starts. Yeah, they don't really have a choice. They're like, well, 
let's just bring him back up and see what happens again. And listen, he's, he's got out of the inning. But, bro, we're mid four right now. He's given up seven hits, and he's pitched 82 pitches right now. He's not. Second, like, you can't have this guy pitching in the playoffs. At this rate, he will not be on the playoff roster. Well, who where, who they put on the playoff roster from? Is this the second Tommy John surgery, right? Yeah. Yeah, he's had two of them. I mean, he, here's a guy coming back after his first one. Great year, 60 wins. Look like, all right, possible Hall of Fame kind of projection. He's still young. He gets knocked out last year. Looks like trash this year. I, I think you got to give him a little time. You can't expect him to come in and be what he was before the injury. And no. you're going to throw him into a like, – he's going to be choppy. You see these guys choppy. Exactly. He, like, and then so next year's year, a wash. sort of work on your stuff, change your stuff, realize all right, what I can and can't do. And readjust, but I'm saying it's hard to come back and adjust and catch up, bro. When the Dodgers are playing for a division right now, you got San Diego oh, and Arizona on your heels. These are big games for them. But this is what I mean, we talked about at the beginning of the season. I talked about the Dodgers I said the pitching staff you got problems with. I mean, Kershaw was coming back from injury or just being old. Bueller was on the injured list. Gosselin, you know, was, was hurt or wherever he's been. He's up. Then you had all the young guys, Sheenan and May. and Well, they've so had horrible luck. Had Yamamoto year. got hurt. Yeah, Don't forget well, Yamamoto. But yes. Yes. Well, I, that's what I'm saying. And how do you know how that guy was going to perform? You didn't see him play in a, in, in, in a major. You saw him in a foreign country play. So the, the people pencil these guys in for They're going to win 115 games because they got Betts, Otani, and Freeman. Well, the rest of the lineup, you got a couple decent guys in there. Tioscar started hot. And, you know, Muncie's, you know, Will Smith's probably a, a better catcher in the league. But – there's some question marks. Do you? I'm, I'm shocked that Arizona's believe, coming back like this. But let me ask you. To me, I still think the Dodgers are going to the World Series, and nope. it's going to be the Dodgers or the Phillies. Right? I mean, you can talk about Arizona and San Diego, but it seems to me like Philadelphia and LA are on a collision course. But I've been, I've talked about it. If, if I'm the Dodgers, I don't want to play these division teams. They lost to San Diego in the playoffs. They lost to Arizona in the playoffs. Right, the, you know they know them. They're, there's a familiarity. It's, yes. I don't you know when you play a division team, it's tougher. I find, so I don't think it's a cakewalk. But who do you think? We said we both agreed Houston in the American League most likely. What? Who would you yeah. pick to win a National League right now? I, as good as the Phillies have been, and and I think right now they're probably the best overall team the way they're playing. Although they've had some bad games, like every team has some bad games. I, I want to go out on a, not a crazy limb out here hanging off of off the tree, but I think the Padres are a team just because it's no one thought about them this year, right? The past years are making trades. They're bringing in Soto. We got Scherzer. We're signing with Chad. Like, they're bringing all these. And this year was kind of thought of, well, uh, maybe Arizona's going to be good. They got they got a third pitcher. They got Rodriguez to come in here behind Kelly and uh, Gallon, and maybe uh, B. Fatty is going to be pretty good. So that was kind of like a team they thought would repeat. But I think the yeah. Padres are going to maybe shock me. You know, they made the deal for the bullpen. Martin Perez comes over in a trade, and he looks like he's, you know, the best thing since Puff Rice and his three starts or whatever. You know, he's been solid. I'm going to say the Padres. Although, again, if you're going to give me the Phillies, my Philly pot is, spot is with Suarez and Sanchez. They've kind of overperformed all year, and I, eventually they're going to kind of hit a little wall. You know, they're going to have a couple bad starts. Is that going to be in the playoffs when it, when it matters? They're going to get you shot, notice? You know, shelled a little bit? You'll notice with the Phillies too, Sean, they sort of always peak too early, right? And like you said, by the time they get to the playoffs, they're worn out. I know they made it to the World Series, but last year they peaked too early. I don't dismiss San Diego. I think they're dangerous. We've been talking about them for a couple of weeks, and their odds keep dropping. A lot of people thought after, like you said, they spent all that money, and then their owner passed away, unfortunately, right? Yeah. What just happened? No, that's a home run. Dude, see, on, the <laughs> you know, did you see his buddy on like, Seattle just, just like murdered himself on the wall? Like he came down like hard, bro. Like I, I looked up. I'm like, did he catch that or what just happened? We'll see the replay here. It was like vicious, like into the wall, man. I looked like a home run it? to me. It looks like a home run to me personally. Yeah, Gavin Lux hit it. Yeah, that's a home run. Thing.
happened, what has transpired here at the First Bank Center here in Denver, Colorado. It wasn't just a big night of fights, it was a big night of memorable moments. Conor McGregor with us here in Denver, Colorado. Both left hand from Ron Paul. Right hand, right back from Mike Perry. Could I get a face off with Conor McGregor, man? It's an incredible setup here, incredible matchmaking, incredible storytelling. Oh, you had to come here. All these fighters that step in here are warriors, and all have my respect. And I'm into this game, yeah. We'll be into this, yeah. And we are live here in the Maverick Center here in Salt Lake City, Utah. Folks, what a night it is going to be historic indeed for BKFC 56. Whoever's the king of violence right here, this is going to be a great fight. Today, Conor McGregor, myself, and McGregor Sports and Entertainment is now an owner of Bare Knuckle Fighting Championship. Welcome to the big leagues. David Feldman, baby, he did it. He's now an owner of BKFC with us, and we're going to take this motherfucking thing all the way to the top now. Gavin Lux just hit a home run. It was a wild play. Robles went into the wall hard. It was hard to tell guys, like, what happened. It was it was very one of those – that's what's great about baseball. Like, every play is just so unique and different. You never know what's going to happen. But the ball was deep. He went up. He jumped up. And it sort of looked like he caught it for a second. Like, the ball disappeared. Like, so you couldn't tell. Did it go – like, it wasn't far enough over the wall to tell, like, did he catch it or go over the wall? When you saw it in slow motion, you saw, no, he didn't even catch it. It went over the wall barely, but he crashes into the wall, falls down, loses his glove, and is lying on his back, and then the ball's lying beside him. So it's like, what the hell? Like, it's hard to compute what happened. Everybody was confused, everybody, about what happened. The ball came through the wall. There's, like, a cushion sort of thing at the bottom of the wall, and the ball, like, bounced and squeezed through back up onto the field, and it confused the hell out of everybody. But it is a home run. So it's 3-1 for Seattle now. The Dodgers have put a run on the board in the bottom of the, uh, the fourth inning. Sean Higgs uh, in the house uh, with us. All right, Sean. So um, I think it's enough Dodger bashing right now. Let's change the subject uh, as far as the, <laughs> do- the Dodgers pitching style. Let's, let's 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 bash let's bash the Bears. I think the Bears are going to be terrible. I think the Bears win five games. What the Chicago Bears? So yeah, let's, let's, Caleb let's Williams. Chicago into it. Terrible. Well, listen, their win total is eight and a half. They won seven games last year with pretty mediocre to poor quarterback play with Fields and uh, Bajan. Uh, they still won seven games. They bring in Rona Dunes. They have a very good defense. They bring in Roman Dunze, who's a stud wide receiver from Washington. They they sign Keenan Allen uh, for they get Keenan Allen for the Chargers. I mean, this this is an exciting football team. They're in a tough division. No, no, no. But listen, they got a rookie quarterback. They still got a crap head coach. People want to see Caleb fail or think he's not going to be as good as the hype. And I don't think Ibrahimu sucks as a coach personally. But go on. Uh, listen, yeah, I don't think he's a good coach. I mean. Wh- you you just had a quarterback who you thought was the franchise, and I guess it failed, even though they won seven games. You didn't can, you, did you surround them with guys like what, you're bringing now. You got a new coordinator, you got a new quarterback, you got new toys to play with. Oh, that sorry, sorry, Sean, mean, sorry, sorry, sorry. Max Muncy just went deep. Another home run, oh, three two. 
There we go. Here come the Dodgers. Here come the Dodgers. They're winning the World keep Series talking. Now, apparently. Keep talking, Sean. Keep talking, Smack. <laughs> the I like it. Yeah, keep talking, but go on, sir. I, listen, the, the fact that Seattle scored three runs should be um, – I mean, this is – I like the Seattle staff is excellent. They can't score runs anyway. Yeah, so the Bears. Why do we love the Bears here? And rookie quarterbacks, you you right off the bat, you're going to a garbage team that has holes all over the place. So okay, you brought in a, a, a wide receiver. Uh, you got a new coordinator. Now you're learning on not learning on a fly, but at least these guys are playing a little bit in preseason. Has, has he looked super duper in preseason? Okay, yes. they've won games, but this is a team. Who's he playing again? Come on, you you believe in preseason football? Like that, listen, that's that's let, let me go over, let me go over their depth chart here. You got Caleb Williams at quarterback, okay. uh, DeAndre Swift and Khalil Herbert at running back, DJ Moore, Keaton Allen, and Roman Dunze. That's one of the best wide receiver rooms in the National Football League. Point blank, DJ Moore, Keenan Allen, Roman Dunze, Cole Komet. Uh, and word out of Chicago actually is Gerald Everett's having a better camp than Komet. You got a nice one-two punch at uh, at tight end here with Gerald Everett and Komet. Everett's just one of these guys that's been around, been on winning football teams uh, before. Offensive line play needs to get a little bit better. It's always a concern the with NFL. the Bears. You're not, a State. You're not playing Oregon State. You're not playing Oregon State. There's not Arizona Caleb State. Williams. Not... This is that a is USC true. versus. Uh... That is true. But he's already – he's got more talent. He's already better than half the quarterbacks in the National Football League. Put it That's this way. You know what? That's what they about Stroud, every quarterback. Every C. quarterback Stroud, comes out the best quarterback ever. C.J. Stroud just lit up the NFL. Caleb Williams is a better college quarterback than C.J. Stroud was. Is that tra- – so that's translating now? How is Andre Ware no. in college? It doesn't always – no, it doesn't always translate. David, David um, Fittler put up a bunch but, of huge numbers too. Yeah, but that's there we go. You know, you, 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 so you you're telling me you don't think Caleb Williams is all that because he is. I heard the same thing about Bryce Young. How's he look? I mean, I, do we got to go down the, the road no, of quarterbacks who they failed? Didn't say the same thing. They, Trey Caleb Lance Williams. is an Trey the, the Trey Lance was in, people are betting MVP for Trey Lance and, and the Niners win the Super Bowl. Trey Lance, let's get rid of Jimmy Garoppolo to get the Super Bowl. I mean. Really? Can That's you all true. I'm not disputing that. But Caleb Williams isn't bit. Trey Lance that played at North Dakota State, bro. I mean, well, they thought he was going to be uh, Carson Wentz, another another uh, small school kind of guy. Listen, I just don't buy into some rookie quarterback coming in and is having monster years out of the blue yeah, on a nine, bad nine it's, wins. It's a sad nine franchise. Wins. Nine wins isn't a monster year. Like, we're, not, I don't, I don't, we're not saying, oh, a monster year. We're not saying the guy's going to win I, the Super Bowl. They are four-point favorites at home over the Tennessee Titans that have got a whole new regime going in there. Well, Will Levi's quarterback of that yeah, Week one, who are like, you taking? I got Tennessee. The Bears are going to beat them. <laughs> four and a half. The Bears are so good. If, if he's such a good quarterback, who's better? Will Levi and, and Kentucky, who did nothing, and then Caleb Williams. Will right? It's off Will the board. Uh, he's Levi's. No, he's Levi's. He, that's, he spells his name like the jeans. He's Will Levi's. That's it. That's what I say. <laughs> Louis Gill. It's not Louis Hill from the Yankees. It's Louis Gill. What I'm saying here, Gabe, right? I mean, how are they a four-point favorite over a ter- – who's coaching the Titans? You know the, the new coach's name? They're because uh, yeah, it's the uh, like, exactly. Callahan. <laughs> I mean, Callahan. this team, a total whole rebirth of them, and they're a four-point dog to this guy. He's the best thing since sliced bread. Caleb Williams is going to be in there, be better than C.J. Stratton. I'll tell you what. I'll, I'll tell I'll you. I'll take CJ Stroud week two. Unlo- take the Texans right now minus three in week two at home over the Bears because they're going to destroy them. They'll put forty up on the Bears at home. If you like the, um, if you like the Titans, wait it out because people are going to bet on the Bears. The hype will be real with Caleb Williams going into week one. The Bears oh, yeah. will be a trendy pick. People think the Titans are going to suck, and people like the Bears. A lot of people in the public like the Bears. I've taken a lot of dogs, and all the lines have come down already from week one. Carolina's come down to five. Denver's come down to five. Jets have come down from uh, to six, five and a half. Like all the dog, or they've all come down early. I'm sure they'll go back up by game time because the publics will be all over the the phase in these spots. But yeah, the, the I'm Bears, not, I, I I can't wait till the Bears, the Bears go on the road and lose back to back weeks at Washington and at Arizona. Their schedule is very manageable, though the Chicago Bears. 
it's sort of like they have an easy game, hard game, hard, easy game, hard game. Like it's, it's not, there's not a lot of where it's like, oh my God, what a gauntlet of games. They were the worst team in the league. They, I mean, they were one of the worst teams in the league. I mean, uh, if you look at this, okay, we'll, we'll get the, um, they look, they open up the season with a lot of winnable games here, actually. It gets tougher as the year goes on. If you can't get the schedule up on the screen, guys, uh, with the Chicago Bears. They host they the Tennessee it. Titans to start the season. Then they go That's to Houston. That's a win. Give them Tough a win. Spot. That's a loss. That's a loss. One and one. One and one. All right. Then they go to Indianapolis. Total toss. Loser. Up. Loser. They're losing Indiana Road. Losing. All right. Then they host the Rams. I will give them a toss up there because it's home, and I don't know the Rams. Again, the injury concerns of the Rams worry me, but the Rams do have a better coach and a quarterback. Okay, well, either way, call it two and two uh, then, because you know what I mean. Right, all right, right, so we'll call, call it two and two. two. Yeah, then they host Carolina. That should be a win. Right. Three and two. Yeah, then they host Jacksonville. Loser. Then they go to Washington. They're, they're losing not one a, of these two games at Arizona or Washington. That's not, but so I'm just saying. Pick a game. It's not, it's not like, oh, my, oh, we got to go to Washington. Then they go to Arizona. Them lose both then they games. play the I Patriots. Can, I can see them losing both of those games on the road coming out of bye week. So what's like your prediction for the Bears order, then? You think they're going to be 7 and 10 again? Tennessee, say they get Carolina's two, Patriots three. I think they have like maybe five wins on their team. Six tops. Tops. Wow. They're not being right, Green more, Bay more twice. They're not being the Lions Sean twice. Crazy Higgs on the other side. And McGregor Sports and Entertainment is now an owner of Bare Knuckle Fighting Championship. Welcome to the big leagues. David Feldman, baby, we did it. He's now an owner of BKFC with us, and we're going to take this motherfucking thing all the way to the top now. This is Sports Rage. I'm Rancy. Sean Higgs going hard after the Chicago Bears. Under eight and a half wins. Seven and ten last year. And uh, you're saying that they do, you know, they, they, they're probably the same thing uh, this yes. year. Although you said even five or six. Um, as I said, I the second half of the schedule is tough. But... Problems. Rookie quarterbacks no, they do. have problems. They do. And, uh, listen, 
we, we've all saw preseason football so far, and it's, it's been talked about, right, all day yesterday or Monday. What are they, 26 and 6 to unders. How many good quarter? We've had this discussion, Gabe. How many good quarterbacks are there in the NFL? They get rid of July practice. No two-a-days. We're getting rid of a preseason game. Let's not play, guys. It shows on the field these quarterbacks need to play. They need to play. You can't have a rookie quarterback come into the NFL and be like, oh, yeah, he's just going to come in here and – Oh, he's, he's the next Mahomes or Brady or Montana or Elway. It's not worked that way. It's not worked well, that way. Well, obviously, there's there's going to be growing pains for everybody. Uh, but there's certain players that are just sort of like, like who no one was going to beat out Caleb Williams for the job type of deal, right? Oh, no. And Jaden Daniels, another one who they just realized, listen, this kid's really, really good. He's going to have to start playing at some point. And – Listen, Tom Brady just talked about it, how he doesn't like throwing rookie quarterbacks out there, no matter how good they are. He goes, they, he thinks they should develop. But we live in an impatient uh, world uh, right now. But I will Everybody say – Remember Troy Aikman? How about Troy Aikman's rookie season? How'd that go? Yeah, they went 1-15. Um, I will say, though, we talked about the Texans. And, you know, the Detroit Lions are sort of the trendy team in the, in the NFC uh, North. But look at the AFC South and the Texans. Plus 105 to win a division. And it's funny because I remember last year talking about the Jags. And people were like, there's no way the Jags don't win a division. And I said, the Jags were like the worst team in the NFL the year before. Like, they just had the number one pick of the draft. But now people don't think they can lose. And it's funny. It's almost the same thing with the Texans. (laughs) They literally had like the second pick and the eighth pick of the draft. And suddenly it's like, oh, they, they can't lose this division. They're a very good football team. They are. Let's see if they can handle success right now. They're going to have a target on their back. And it's yep. a competitive division, right? The Colts have some talent, an up-and-coming football team, although I think they're going to have some growing pains with their young quarterback. But then you get into the Jags, and Trevor Lawrence just got paid big money. So I'm not going to say it's a make-or-break year for Trevor Lawrence because the guy's super rich. He's got paid $50 million a year or whatever yeah. the hell it was, right? Another one is making deals. But – is he ever going to take it to the next level, right? You want you were just bashing hyped up quarterbacks. People yes. bigged up Lawrence like Andrew Luck. They were like, this guy's like John Elway and Andrew Luck. He's can't miss. He's a star. He's going to be a great quarterback. And he's been an okay quarterback, but he hasn't been a great quarterback. But I do like the Jags roster, though, actually. And I think the Jags are going to compete with the Texans for this division, and they're plus 250 to win the yeah. division. <laughs> I'm not taking I'm not taking Stroud in year two at plus 105 odds. That's ridiculous. You're either going Jaguars or Colts. It's that simple. You, you like the Jags better because they were a playoff team and, and we're right there on the cusps. I get it. You want to take the Colts because you think Richardson stays healthy at a plus 310. He's an exciting player and looked really good. I'll understand. Texans, no. I, they are not, I don't, I'll go out and say no playoffs for the Texans. How about that? We, you know, where's Cam? Cam loves my crazy takes. I'll say no Texans playoffs. I'm going to go no Texans playoffs. I'll see one of the other. T- yeah. I mean, we're going to have who? We're going to have Buffalo. We're going to have the Jets. We're going to have the Ravens, probably Cincinnati, um, Kansas City, and then coming down to this division. I think we're going to get two teams, and I think it's going to be the Colts and the Jacks. And honestly, I didn't even mention the Dolphins. I think the Dolphins are going to make the play. You know, I mean, I don't. I think the Texans are going to have – have some losses where they had wins last year, and he's not going to be perfect throwing. What, what did Stroud throw? What six interceptions last year? Something ridiculous like that? That's not going to happen again. I mean, nope. Give me the Jags and Colts over them. Sean Higgs in the house. All right, Sean. Before we get you out of here, college of football set to kick off uh, this Saturday. Uh, should be noted, although there there hasn't been any. Any movement on the point spread due to this, but uh, the Delaware State Hornets uh, football team, they're playing against Hawaii on on Saturday night at uh, midnight Eastern time. And um, <laughs> yeah, no, well, what happened is they left Delaware today to go. They, you know, obviously there's no flights to uh, Honolulu from Delaware. So they had to take a bus, a team bus from Delaware to JFK Airport in uh, in New York. And their bus broke down. They had bus issues, so they missed their flight to to Honolulu. <laughs> so there are, there's a little what? bit of a delay for them. They're going to get there a little bit late. Listen, they're playing on Saturday night. There's time for them to get there, but it is a ten and a half hour flight coming up uh, for them. But 
people have paid so little attention to this game, Sean. The point spread was 38 and a half before, and it remains 38 and a half now. Like, how much does it cost Delaware State to fly out there? Like, what does it cost to, to, to fly a team to Hawaii? A couple now hundred you got, thousand bucks for all the players. Right? I mean, how much, how much are they getting paid? Like, is it even worth it going out there? Yeah, in, exactly. In August, Hawaii's, in August, Hawaii's paying Why them? not in November or something? Why not go in November when the weather's nice? And Hawaii's got Hawaii's, what, a high school stadium? They've got a high school stadium. They're, they're rebuilt. Aren't they redoing their remodeling their Aloha Stadium? <laughs> they're probably paying them like, you know, 450000 dollars 500 or so, whatnot. Um, no flight to get Philly, the win. a little closer. They couldn't get out of Philly. It, they couldn't get one out of it's Philly. It's to get the win, Bank. Sean. Go it's to, to get the win. Play out of Newark. That's that's why these teams do this, right? They're buying the win. The, the, the buying win. It's like, all right, we're going to beat Delaware State. Delaware State needs the money. Delaware State makes a couple of hundred thousand dollars. They lose the football game, but they make money to keep their program going. And we get closer. We get a win to be bowl eligible, right? Like, that's what I it is. It. I mean, yeah, well, I mean, that's like Alabama, right? When they bring in their uh, Eastern – Alabama's to play. Like the SEC always has those cupcakes on their schedule. Never playing a real yeah, team but, in there. <laughs> no, but they, you know what? They do that. They're being nice though when they do that. Well, you know what oh, I mean? Yeah. It's well, almost like, like Nick game, Saban. Same thing. They, yeah, but Nick Saban will do it for a coach he likes. He's like, you know what? I like yeah. this coach. Let's hook their program up. We'll pay them one point four million to come here and we'll drill them. But they're gonna make a million dollars to show up. <laughs> Thanks, Sean. No, I, I take it easy. Georgia Tech. Georgia Tech somewhere. Myself and McGregor Sports and Entertainment is now an owner of Bare Knuckle Fighting Championship. Welcome to the big leagues. David Feldman, baby, he did it. He's now an owner of BKFC with us, and we're going to take this motherfucking thing all the way to the top now. This is Sports Rage. I'm Renzi. The pits, the players, the hustlers, the people, the bust them, and everybody is in between. Thanks to Sean Higgs for joining us on the show. Sean with his hot takes, as always, except I agree with some of them. Um, but so Sean is a, a hard pass on the Chicago Bears. He really likes the under eight and a half. He's not buying the Caleb Williams hype. Rookie quarterbacks do generally struggle in their rookie seasons. And like their teams, it's rare 
Like, there's exceptions. Thing is, like, you know, you tell you, CJ Stroud is really good. Um, should note, though, he didn't beat JJ McCarthy. <laughs> I'm just going to let you know that. But uh, he is really good. He didn't beat Michigan, but he's really good. But um, so the thing is, though, so are the Houston Texans, right? It's like, you know, the quarterback could be really good, but if he's in a bad situation, you know, it, 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 he's, he's in, a, in a terrible spot anyways, right? It's all about, like, the, the spot, and so it's like a perfect storm. Like, the Houston Texans, we've talked about this with Rick Saratella for years. He's going to join us in a couple of minutes. The Texans have done a great job drafting as a whole. Like, you know, look at all the players that they have besides, like, C.J. Stroud that they've drafted that have worked out. Right, like, you know, look at Nico Collins, wide receiver out of Michigan. Um, the defensive players that they keep on drafting. We talked a lot about Will Anderson. They knew this guy's a stud. He can lead a defense. Let's get him. Right, like, a lot of, like, players from big-time programs, if you'll notice. What, like, the, the Houston Texans. They draft, you know what I mean, Ohio State, Alabama, Michigan. Right, like, they, there's a pattern to what they do. You'll notice some teams are smart. And they draft, it's like, it's not rocket science. It's almost like, you know, some teams overthink it, right? But it's like, I don't know, if Georgia's the best team, let's go for the best players on the best team. They're like, we know that the players on Michigan are good. We know the players on Ohio State are good. So it sounds simple, but if you look at, like, their roster, there's a lot of, like, big-time programs and players that have won before. Right, it's a big thing. All right, have they won? Are they have they played in big games before? As opposed to just sort of pure talent, they've done a good job of building the roster up. So it's not just like the quarterback all the time. But C.J. Stroud is amazing. I'm not I'm not going to dispute. It. I'm a big fan of. I think the Texans are really good. But you know, like they've anointed the Texans. Like you know, the Texans remind me of the Oregon Ducks this year. Right, it's like yeah, the Ducks are really, 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 really good. No one's going to dispute it, but so are the teams that they're playing. And it's almost like you're for, you know, people forget that. It's like, oh, you know, Michigan are going to have a big problem this year. Oregon go there, not the other way around. <laughs> right? Like <laughs> the game, the game's in Michigan. Right? So there's, they're still going to have to go out and do it. And like the Houston Texans are really good, but so are the Cincinnati Bengals. So are the Buffalo Bills. So are the Baltimore Ravens. And I didn't even get to the Kansas City Chiefs at the top of the ladder yet. Right? Like, there's a lot of good teams. Um, and look, we talked about the MVP odds in the National Football League and, like, the first five of them. Is that a fair ball? It is. Is it? No, it isn't. I fell for the crowd. I shouldn't fall have fallen for the drunk fans in, in the bleachers at Dodger Stadium. T. Oscar Hernandez, it's super close, but it, it was foul. And, you know, I'm going to, to the defense of the fans, they weren't celebrating. They were doing like, oh, no. <laughs> like, now that I see the replay, so I take it back um, for, like, the reaction of the home run. It was one of those, like, and, you know, the, Do the Dodger Stadium, it has the really short just sort of, you know, in the corner of the outfield, a short little fence there. And they got the foul pole. It was like right, right, like a line drive. But it, it was a foul ball by like a foot or two. Um, so it's 3-2 in his baseball game still. The Dodgers have hit two solo home runs to get back in it. They nearly just hit a third to tie the baseball game. I personally get the feeling that the Dodgers are going to come back. You know, Bueller, when it was all said and done, well, they'll take it. All right, he gave up three runs. They're in this game right now, and as the game goes on, I think the Dodgers will break through. They've, you know, they've hit a couple of solo home runs. They're due for like an inning where they get some guys on base. And for the record, the um, the number right now in this game, the uh, the fifth inning has just come to an end, so we're going to the uh, the top of the sixth right now. Seattle are minus one sixty five favorites with a uh, with a three two lead. So you're getting plus one thirty five with the Dodgers. But they still uh, have the 6th, the 7th, the 8th, and the ninth, and they're only down a run. I think the Dodgers will come back and win this game at plus 135. The Giants are leading the White Sox 4-1 right now, end of 8. And uh, San Diego, man, San Diego just keep winning. They're up 7-5. Rick Saratella joins us next. Bring it. <laughs> 